<laughs> hey y'all, Scott here. It's time to kick back, relax, get your heart rate questionably low because today I'm going to be showing you what happens when drywall and video games come together. <laughs> video games are pretty cool. They got polygons and they were a waste of $40. But you see, they require hardware, electricity, space, wasting $40, and when you have a lot of physical video games and consoles, you need walls. The game room is a concept I've fallen in love with. I've always been big into the whole man cave thing. As a kid, whenever I'd go over to somebody's house and it had a basement filled with a bar and a pool table and all that useless garbage they probably never used, I would always squee. Having something like that would have been awesome. I wanted a downstairs susceptible to flooding too. I never had a basement, but I've always wanted and still really want one. All nice and cozy filled with this and this and this. I always wanted a giant room dedicated to video games with that sort sort of man cave vibe, but sometimes you have to make do with what you got. So years ago, I took my bedroom and turned it into a makeshift game room studio living room office. You can't really have a game room without amassing a cornucopia of games and systems. And prior to 2013, I would constantly do the unthinkable and sell the games I wasn't playing anymore. Just add me to the list already. This was my setup in 2011. Nothing screams I'm 14 and trying to make the most out of what I got than this. I was always interested in collecting games and the history of the medium in general. But of course, when you're that young, you kind of have to sell games so you can get new ones. And the only game store I could really do that at was GameStop. Because of that, I couldn't really keep a massive collection consistently and couldn't really start buying the retro stuff. I was limited to basically whatever GameStop had in stock. Now 2013 comes around and with me being able to drive myself and having an actual job, I could start collecting video games and build up what would be my game room. I wanted a room friends could walk into and see so many games spanning so many consoles we could all play together. I wanted a cool and effective setup for playing games and watching movies, an organized collection of the games I loved and always wanted to play. A room somebody could walk into and go, f you got Fling Smash? This was what I wanted back in June of 2013, and that was the time I started working towards building a game room. And a full six months later, this was after I started? I think I had some NES and SNES games somewhere else. In this later picture, I moved them all to the bottom of this bookshelf. I'm sure you can tell where my hatred for Platinum Hits and Player's Choice started, and what better three titles to start rebuilding my GameCube collection with than Mario Golf, WarioWare, and Wave Race? Yeah, only the necessities. Where the hell were my 3DS games? I have the system, I had games for it back then, where were they? Back then, the consoles I had set up were a Wii U, Xbox 360, and Retron 3. It was one of those aftermarket consoles that played Genesis, NES, and SNES games. But to be fair, it did the job. I think for me back then, and for budding collectors, it's a cheap and efficient way to play the original cartridges. I also kept all my boxes for everything. Game consoles, accessories, electronics, everything. I just kind of piled them up in the corner. I was worried people wouldn't think I didn't mean business if they didn't see my iPhone 4 box. Over the next few months, I kept on buying more and more stuff every two weeks or so, and thus, I had to get serious. I bought a cheap media shelf. I have a love-hate relationship with these. They're called Atlantic Media Shelves. I'd say if you're just starting to collect, these are great to put games on. They look nice, and they're cheap, but the problem is, they're cheap. They just never felt sturdy enough, really. I was always kind of concerned they'd fall over or break or something. I think the most impressive collection increase at this time was the GameCube for me. I amassed some good stuff by this point, including multiple sets of Donkey Kong bongos, again, only the necessities. I loved building the 360 and original Xbox collections, and this was right smack in the middle of the Wii U era, so I picked up new releases as they came out, alongside filling out my Wii library with the must-have games I didn't own already. A few months later, it got to the point where I had to get even more serious. I bought another cheap media shelf. This was a setup I could get behind. It was so balanced. Two shelves between the TV and game consoles. Uh, sure, this bookshelf never really screamed, put an Xbox in me, but it did the job. <laughs> the classic end labels for my Nintendo 64 games. I printed these off and spanked them on with scotch tape. Yeah, that didn't work the greatest. It just ended up peeling off like crazy or attracting hair and random stuff. I don't know, like pretzels or something. I was getting a lot more NES games and my Game Boy collection was sitting peacefully in shambles on a single shelf. This setup was great. It was how I beat Mega Man 2 the way I set up my original PS4 for the first time, I hated it. I changed it half a year later. Let's welcome this beaut of an entertainment center. This was perfect for housing systems, and it looked nice. Yeah, but that meant I had to move the shelves over to the right side of the room, which, hey, if you've seen this room, you know the iconic wall slant. That made putting shelves against it difficult, but it worked in the end. Eventually, I had to take the old bookshelf that was once the stomping grounds for my consoles and use it for my overflow of games and Time Crisis 3. 
I bought a third cheap media shelf. Ah, oh, hey, Call of Duty Black Ops on the Wii, where it belongs. I eventually did a full-blown switcheroo. Move the TV where the shelves were, move the shelves where the TV was. Oh, f I bought a fourth cheap media shelf. It was then I decided to forego the cheap media shelf lifestyle and enter the realm of Sweden. Ikea is not only the best place to buy furniture, it's the best place. I mean, come on, food court, furniture? For God's sakes, they have dollar rats. I upgraded to a good few Ikea Billy bookcases, and there's not much an Ikea Billy bookcase can't do. I wanted these because they were way sturdier, plus being much deeper allowed for more things to fit in them. The old shelves were about as deep as a standard DVD case, some things just couldn't fit on them. Problem was, I had to stack two of these bookcases. It made things crazy tall. I wouldn't recommend this, but it was all I could have done concerning the amount of games I had and the space I had to work with. Overall, I love this room. It was where I spent a good chunk of my childhood, and I definitely transformed it into my own little virgin circus, but it was obvious I was outgrowing it. I barely had any room anymore. My computer desk was right smack in front of my NES games. That's no way to store ranking. I needed a room specifically for the games, a room just for the console setup, and a room to just go to sleep. Sleeping in the same room you play Devil's Third in really does something to you. After a certain <laughs> happened, I moved into my own apartment, and thus, we have, bam, a room for games? This is my current game room, and I'm pretty happy with everything as it is. There's not like a ton of room for expansion, but I can definitely make things work if I need more space. But of course, we gotta start here. I have all my main game consoles I consistently play in the living room down the hall. I upgraded the TV stand to this, and invokes the spirit of the original one I used, but has more of these shelves for consoles. I really like this style of TV stand because there's a hole in each section to feed wires through. You see, that's one of my least favorite things about setups. I look slightly behind the TV stand and it's terrifying. I went for more of a wood look compared to the black coat of paint of my old one because while I think the black looked cooler, it showed dust like crazy. This style hides imperfections much better in my opinion. I mainly keep consoles that I use a lot hooked up at all times. Of course, systems like the PS3, 360, OG Xbox, N64, and GameCube are plugged into the dreaded surge protector that's left unplugged and is only plugged in when I want to play any of these systems of doom. I keep them out here because they're systems I have a lot of games for, but I don't play them enough to warn a greater fire hazard than I already have by leaving everything plugged in all the time. The PS4, Xbox One, Wii U, and Switch are always plugged in just because I play them the most. Of course you may go, wait, you keep the Wii U plugged in? Yeah, I hate me too for saying I still use the Wii U frequently, but it's my way of playing a ton of generations of Nintendo games. I play Wii U, Wii, and virtual console games on this thing. Until the Switch gets all or a good chunk of that stuff, I'm leaving this plugged in, unfortunately. But what about the Xbox One? Do I use that frequently? No, but all these systems were kind of made with the intention of being left plugged in. I mean, the PS4 screams at you if you unplug it improperly, so I'll just do what it tells me. I know probably all systems are made with the intention of being left plugged in, but stuff like the Switch just goes into sleep mode, PS4 has rest mode, and these guys are the most modern consoles, so all that adds up to me just leaving these plugged in. I use the Super Retro Trio Plus for playing Genesis, NES, and SNES games. You see, I never grew out of that shitty aftermarket console phase of my life. Now, I mainly use this as a means to play these types of games through HDMI. It's actually pretty damn good, though with the main flaw being that all the games are stretched into widescreen. Would you ever trust somebody that looked like this? A lot of TVs have a feature to squish a widescreen image back to 4x3, and if you're using this console to get a gameplay footage, you can always format the screen properly while editing. It doesn't make it less annoying, though. I house most of my controllers in this bookshelf here, with either just one or two in a Ziploc bag. That helps me stay organized and keep the controller wires from taggling up and things getting too funky. Now, the only other game-related doodad I have in my living room is my beloved Galaga Arcade 1-Up cabinet. I always wanted an arcade machine. I've specifically looked at this one right here, the Pac-Man Arcade Party 1. I love the old-school Namco arcade titles, Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, Rally X, Dig Dug, and definitely Galaga. I've always wanted an old-school Namco arcade cabinet with either a few or all of these games I fell in love with. The thing is, is arcade machines can be stupid expensive, a pain to move, especially into a smaller apartment like this, and can be tricky to maintain. Arcade 1UP makes these cabinets that are specifically made for at-home use. They're smaller than a regular cabinet, but big enough to still feel like an arcade machine. The base model is supposed to be played while sitting down, but I bought this riser. Is it perfect? No. Is it better than an actual arcade machine? Does it have better controls? Again, no. But everything in my opinion is good enough for the 250 bucks I paid for this. And for casual arcade fans who always wanted an arcade-like experience in their homes, it's perfect. Like yeah, the original machine's quality is way better with like the paint and sticks and buttons, but the 1UP cabs still feel like an arcade machine. Not as good, but it does the trick. It's lightweight, it's easy to move, and I officially have a Caligar arcade machine. That's amazing. 
It's pretty lame to me that the Namco releases only have two games on them each, though. They have like a Street Fighter 2 one and these Atari ones that include more games, but here it's just Galaga and Galaxian. <laughs> I'm sorry, Galaxian is fine, but you give me the choice between the two, I will always play Galaga, so really it has one game. I'm open for a Namco Museum arcade one-up cab. There's something along the lines of the arcade party machine I wanted. Anyways, let's move over to the meat and potatoes, the cream of the crop of any game room. The game room. Here we have Sex Wall. I kept with the Billy bookcases from Ikea, but just like what I did with the TV stand, I opted for this light wood grain style instead of the black. Like I said, the black looks cooler, but it shows too much dust. The modern games start things off. Everything's in very rough chronological order of when the systems release. Like the Switch starts, it then goes to Xbox One, PS4, PS3 next for some fucking reason, and Wii U. I plopped the PS4 and PS3 together just because the cases are around the same size and they're both PlayStation consoles. I thought it fit well. The Wii U collection, oh boy, it's one of my darkest secrets. I own nearly half of the North American library for this thing. It's something I kind of like whittling away at. I'm not necessarily looking to get a full set, but if I get there one day, Okay, sure, that's what I'll be known for. I own basically all the good games and nearly all the Nintendo first party titles, except Mario and Sonic at the real 2016 Olympic Games, dammit. Next shelf, we have Wii and GameCube. A Wii games, I kind of own all the major ones I've always wanted. I think the last one I was able to check off was Kirby's Dream Collection. There are definitely some I still want, so if I see something I want at a good price, yeah, I'll do the unthinkable and buy it. But overall, I'm pretty content where I'm at. GameCube, similar story. I'm definitely still missing some of the must-haves compared to the Wii, and mainly because GameCube games are just way harder to come by, but I have most of the major, major ones I want. Xbox 360 and original Xbox. Listen, I love both of these consoles, but they're also in the I've gotten almost everything I really want for them camp, and it saddens me. I generally have an unwritten rule with most consoles. I generally pick my go-to platform for a generation, and that's where I buy most of my multi-platform games. Here, it's PS4. Generation before that, it was the 360. Generation before that, it's the original Xbox. This console is great. It was the most powerful at the time, and on top of that, it has a great library of exclusives. I don't know why my collection splits off and continues all the way over here. I just don't. The Retro Shelf. Contrary to me being a stupid kid, I grew up with all these systems in one way or another. Whether it was playing the NES at my grandma's house, playing SNES games on the Game Boy Advance, N64 games with my cousins, I just straight up had a Genesis. I love the older games. They're some of my favorites to collect and fiddle around with. NES games are fairly cheap in comparison to the other platforms, especially considering a lot in this collection is just pure garbage. I haven't really delved into the hacks and homebrews market for any system, but I do have the reproduction Nintendo World Championship, Campus Challenge and Powerfest cartridges for both the NES and SNES. I love these things, they're, they're the coolest to own. SNES games are dumb expensive, so I still have a ways to go, definitely some key titles missing, and collecting N64 has never been my favorite. I'm in the camp that believes the vast majority of games on the platform have aged poorly or just were never that great to begin with. Still some of my favorite games of all time are on this system, but it's one of my least favorite Nintendo systems to play today. I did buy these N labels on Etsy, I believe from this seller. You just get a full set of all Nintendo 64 game labels and they do the trick. Genesis, oh my god, I love picking up good Genesis games in the box. It's kind of like people don't talk about some of the best Genesis titles as much as Nintendo systems, so it's just really fun to pick up these games, some of my personal favorites. McDonald's Treasureland Adventures, Ghostbusters, Castlevania Bloodlines, Get Out of My Life, Comic Zone. The final major game shelf is kind of just all the systems I don't have much for, and DS sh DS, 3DS, my Game Boy Advance games, which I made covers and used DS boxes for years ago. I really should redo these and make new ones for my other GBA games. I printed these off on a garbage inkjet printer. I don't own a lot of original Game Boy and Game Boy Advance cartridges just because they don't come with plastic boxes for them. And it's just hard to warrant spending a good chunk of change on games this tiny that don't come with a case. Don't get me wrong, I care more about the actual games and playing them compared to the cases but it just makes it harder to remember what Game Boy games I have physically when they're all just kind of in a bag somewhere. Which again, just makes it hard to warrant buying new ones. I should really get into that, I love the Game Boy line. We got these PS1 and Dreamcast collections to spice your day up. Austin Powers Pinball, anyone? PS2 games. Uh, the system was never really my thing. I'd always rather play the Xbox or GameCube. Then we have the final shelf area, which is just a bunch of what the hell ever. After burner on the Master System, yeah sure, I don't even own one. Star Fox 64 promotional VHS tape, I don't know where else it would go. Two Sega CD games, one Sega Saturn game, and then an awkward long box PS1 game. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be a collection without them. The next shelf, we got all my extra systems or consoles I'm not using right now. Original NES, SNES, the classic editions of said systems, the NES Top Loader, Dreamcast, Saturn, Genesis 32X, CD, PS2, my original PS4, and Wii, 
plus containers with all the extra wires and stuff I need for them. Finally, we have my computer desk where I work and evade taxes. And that's the current game room. There's a closet too. Yeah, this is basically where all the extra stuff goes. Boxes, amiibo, books, magazines, other random collectibles. There's definitely an argument to be made the closet of extra stuff is more interesting than the actual game room. As it is, I like the room. I don't have to compromise too much of what I want out of a game room due to the space, and I'm thankful for that. Like, is there anybody who actually stacks games like this voluntarily? Or puts games behind more games? Like, yeah, that saves space, but my god, this is how games were meant to be stored. Everything is alphabetical here. I understand that's a huge undertaking if you have a lot of games, but I started alphabetizing these things long ago, so it's fairly easy to keep up for me. I mean, come on, it's easy to find anything I want. It makes it kind of fun to put new games on the shelf too, because you have to figure out where it goes alphabetically. It's great. An exception I have to alphabetizing is the Zelda games. Normally I file them under L for Legend of Zelda, but the NES titles I put at the very end of the collection. And the second one is just called Zelda 2, so it would be apart from the first one regardless. They're both the gold cartridges, so I thought, yeah, it makes sense to cap off the collection with these. I usually do that with sequels, put them together with the connecting games even if it doesn't fit alphabetically. And I'm looking at you Tomb Raider. I'm very happy with how everything's set up currently. Well, come on, I can dream big, can I? Scott's dream game room. Well, it'd have to be a basement, uh, totally decked out, nice and cozy. We got all the games organized via the shelves, not a ton of clutter. Two TVs, a nice big 4K one, and then a CRT for the retro consoles. I'm kind of hoping that in the future, a company that specializes in the retro game market creates a new CRT TV. I mean, that would be expensive as all hell. I don't know how possible that would be. The majority of the parts necessary for these things aren't being produced anymore. But hey, a new CRT specifically designed for retro games, that would be great. If it's never gonna happen, I can always check the dump. I'd be super down to pick up more of the arcade one-up cabinets if I had the room. You get a little mini home arcade going. Well, who knows, maybe I could finally commit myself to an actual cabinet. But I personally believe arcade one-up is perfect for at-home use. Again, I still wouldn't keep all consoles plugged in. That's a little ridiculous. Instead, I'd opt to get nice cabinets to store all the systems I don't use frequently. I'd want to display them in a way where maybe all the cords needed to plug them in are in a box that's propping the system up in the cabinet. Of course, a cool looking bar, pool table, or some fun thing like that, air hockey, foosball, maybe even a pinball machine. My goal is to eventually have the greatest man cave ever for a divorced bachelor in his 50s. Game rooms have always fascinated me. I love watching tours of them online, whether in video or just photos, regardless of how big they are even. I don't know about anybody else, but I find a certain beauty in the simplest of game rooms. Don't get me wrong, the huge one with walls lined with games are jaw-dropping sometimes. But the more humble and smaller ones are a bit more engaging for me to look at. It's cool to see all the stuff somebody owns when they can't buy whatever they want. It means they're much more attached to the few games and systems they have. It brings me back to when I first started collecting and started to try to form a game room of my own. Now I'm at this point, and I like it. Things were way more fun back when I was first starting out because I was finally buying all these games I always wanted. But I'm happy where I'm at, and a lot of people in the beginning stages of collecting ask how I was able to afford all this. You see, here's the thing, I bought most of this junk while I was in high school. Most of my paycheck would go towards this stuff. Like, come on, what other expenses did I have back in high school? Medical bills? Please, I've had this dark spot on my thigh for the past six years and nothing's happened. I don't need a doctor. So all in all, I like my game room. There's not much I can really complain about. Except that that does happen sometimes.